When a device is connected to a network, it will automatically be assigned with something called an IP address. Just like a telephone number, which allows us to identify and connect to others, an IP address is a series of numbers that helps a computer device identify and connect to other devices on our home network. This means that on a network, each IP address will need to be unique while also falling within a specific range of numbers. So in order to make managing IP addresses easier, we use something called a DHCP server to issue and manage the IP addresses being given to devices on our home network. Unfortunately, the problem with a DHCP server is that because the IP address that it issues will be dynamic, if a device leaves our network or our DHCP server reboots, there is a chance that the various devices on our network will no longer receive the same IP addresses that they previously used. While this will not be an issue for our B station, as long as we're only using it as a personal cloud storage system, if we also intend to use our B station as a local file server, we're going to need to assign it with an IP address that does not change. Perhaps the easiest method for assigning a static IP address to a Synology B station is to use something called IP reservation, which is a feature built into most models of wireless router. As an example, if we load the settings to our router and then open the section for networking, in the advanced networking section, we have an option called DHCP IP reservations. If we select this option, we can try and give a device on our network a static IP address. Let's tap the Add button to display a list of the devices that are currently connected to our home network. From this list, we now need to locate our Synology B station. If we now tap the down chevron next to our B station's IP address, we will display a field which will allow us to assign our B station with a static IP address. As our router will by default be using the IP address of 192.168.86.1, we like to give our B station the next sequential IP address to that of our router. So we're going to use 192.168.86.2. If we now save the settings, our router will reorganize the IP addresses being used by our network so that our B station uses the static IP address it was assigned with. We can now check that we can access our B station using its new static IP address. So in the address bar of our web browser, if we type 192.168.86.2, when we press enter, we're redirected to the B station web portal, which confirms that we've correctly given our B station a static IP address. Unfortunately, the problem with IP reservation is that not all models of router have this functionality. So the alternative way to assign a static IP address and the one that we prefer to use is to manually assign a static IP address directly to our B station. However, before we start, we first need to see how our home network has been configured by checking DHCP on our router. If we open network settings on our router and then select advanced network settings, we need to locate and select the settings for our local area network. As you can see, our router is using the IP address 192.168.86.1 with its DHCP server then allowed to use any remaining IP addresses in that range of addresses. However, you may have noticed that the manufacturer of this router has by default done a couple of things that may be different to the settings on your router. The first is that this router uses a slightly different IP address to the default address used by most router manufacturers. While this setting is neither right or wrong, the reason this brand of router uses a slightly different IP address is simply to make a would-be hacker's life a little bit harder. So if your router is using a different IP address, that's not a problem and there's no need to look to change it. The second difference you may have noticed is regarding the pool of IP addresses that our DHCP server can use. If we jump to a different router, You can see that usually manufacturers like to start their DHCP address pool with the next corresponding IP address to the one assigned to the router. However, on our router, by default, at the beginning of our DHCP address pool, 
19 addresses have been excluded. The reason these IP addresses have been excluded is so that we can use them with any devices that we wish to manually assign a static IP address. So if your router's DHCP address pool does not exclude any IP addresses, you will need to manually change the DHCP address pool range. To demonstrate, let's once again jump over to our other router. As you can see, we simply need to remove some of the IP addresses from either the beginning or the end of the DHCP address pool. However, after saving the DHCP settings on our router, and to avoid any potential IP address conflicts, we should now reboot this router so that its DHCP server can tidy up any IP addresses that were previously issued. We also think that it's a good idea to reboot any devices currently connected to your home network. This includes the computer that you're working on. The reason for this is to make sure that the devices on your network have all requested a new IP address from the DHCP server on your rebooted router. We're now ready to manually assign our B station with a static IP address. If from a web browser we open the B station portal, and then open system settings. When system settings loads, if we use the sidebar to open system, and then locate the IP address our B station has been assigned by our router, by clicking on the arrow next to the IP address, we are presented with the network settings for our B station. You may have noticed that we have two options, IPv4 and IPv6. These options simply refer to two different internet protocols, with IPv4 mostly used by home networks. If we select Use Manual Configuration, we can now manually assign one of the IP addresses that were excluded from the DHCP address pool on our router. So, in this example, we're going to use 192.168.86.2. However, the static IP address that you use might be different depending on the IP addresses that your router's DHCP address pool issues. As no other network settings need to be changed, we now need to click Apply and wait for our B station to update. If we now exit from system settings and close the B station portal, to confirm that our B station is now using a static IP address, if from the address bar of our browser we type 192.168.86.2, when we press enter, we're once again redirected to the B station web portal. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at the two different methods that you can use to give your Synology B station a static IP address. In the first method, which is by far the simplest to implement, we used a feature built into our router called IP reservation. However, as IP reservation is not a feature built into all models of router, we also took a look at the second method, which requires that we manually assign a static IP address to our B station. So now that we've assigned a static IP address to our B station, we are now ready to take a look at how we create local network shares.